happy Wednesday and thank you for being with me today. I am about to brief you on a case that created a great deal of interest in the Winter Haven area yesterday and the reason that it did is because we ended up with a manhunt. A manhunt that went about 18 hours. It involved a lot of sheriff's deputies, Winter Haven police officers, Auburndale police officers. We're thankful for our colleagues from the other police departments that came to help. And it shows how serious we take the murder of an individual. Well, this all occurred in the Eloise jungle, also known as the Eloise campground. And we received information yesterday that there was possibly a murder in the Eloise jungle and that the victim had been buried. And we were able to confirm that information through other sources. So we sent deputies and detectives out to the area. And sure enough, when we got deep into the jungle on the back side of the campground, we found the victim's body. At about the same time, another group of deputies who were going down a different trail saw the suspect who broke and ran deep into the jungle, so the manhunt was on. And here's what occurred. We know that Robert Simmons, who's 42 years of age, that's known as Mexico, was the person who committed the murder. The information is that probably over the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, somewhere around April 30th or May 1st, he had an argument with our victim. We've not been able to find the victim's next of kin, and obviously because of Marcy's law, we can't identify the victim right now. But he had this argument because allegedly the victim continued on a normal basis to masturbate in the presence of the other people in the homeless camp. And our suspect here didn't appreciate that and really didn't appreciate that he was doing it in front of ladies, so he warned him to quit it. Well, he didn't. So the next time he caught him pleasuring himself, he beat him up and injured him, cut him. And then the third time that he caught him pleasuring himself, after he'd already warned him, and beat him up, he killed him. Well, it took care of the problem. But he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail for murder. So the investigation's underway, and now we've got to find where the person is buried. So here's a cut-out path through the woods. Now understand, we've gone in there with chainsaws, in order to clear a path to where ultimately we found our victim deep, deep in a very thick jungle. So if you look at the woods adjacent to the path we've cut, you can see just how thick that area was. When we arrived, this is what we first saw. This was the shallow grave that Mexico put the victim in. Now, you can't really appreciate what Mexico looks like until you see this picture. This is one bad hombre. He's mean. He's been to prison four times. He's got a lot of criminal charges everything from misdemeanors to felonies to violent felonies. And he put our victim in this grave. This is our victim after we've excavated the grave and you can see the empty grave and our victim on the shore of the grave. Our victim is no saint either. Our victim has been to prison eight times, 
double the amount that our suspect has. He has 33 previous felonies and 35 misdemeanors, where our suspect has four prison trips, 16 felonies, and four misdemeanors. And Mexico, known as Robert Simmons, is currently on probation. Interestingly enough, both of them are members of gangs. Neither of them are in the same gang, nor did this fight occur because they were gang members. In fact, the fight happened because Robert Simmons didn't like the conduct of the victim. So last night we searched all through the night. Our chief, Steve Lester, when the rains came and it, and it was hugely dark, said, look, we've just got to set a perimeter and pick this thing up in the morning. You can't see. It is a thick jungle and we've got to keep our folks safe. So we set this very tight perimeter and at daylight we started our search again and we were able to push through the Eloise campground and we were able to push him out the backside where he gave up without a fight. In fact it was interesting he told the deputy on the perimeter, I've had enough of this. And he threw down the knife and said, this is what I used. So he ran to the perimeter, threw the knife down, and admitted that this is what he used. If you look closely at him, he's got a lot of mosquito bites. He said he went into the water last night and stayed up into the water up to halfway up his head to try to escape us and the mosquitoes. But I'm telling you right now, there's mosquitoes the size of bald eagles in that dadgum swamp. It is a rough, rough, rough area. We went in today and checked on the well-being of the other homeless folks. We had to displace some of them last night in order to keep them safe and to make sure that they too weren't victims of Robert. You see, Robert, known as Mexico, is violent and he's dangerous and he's a bad man. Well, he's an arrested man now, and he's here being interviewed in our Sheriff's Operations Center as I speak. While we were there, we also determined that some of the homeless folks didn't have groceries. So not only did we have a manhunt for 18 hours, but today we've gone back with groceries to feed those that were displaced yesterday. I appreciate the patience of the community because we had some traffic jams, but I think this illustrates clearly to everyone. These are two homeless people with a huge criminal record. Maybe someone would have made a value judgment about, eh, we'll get to it when we can, we'll try to find the suspect when we can. That's not what we do here. Every life is precious. Every life is valuable. And we searched to recover the deceased victim, even though he had a long, illustrious criminal history and was homeless and living in the Eloise campground, as if it had been a relative of the President of the United States that was victimized. And we looked for the suspect with the same energy and enthusiasm as if he had hurt a relative of the President of the United States as opposed to a homeless person. Because you know what? We don't make value judgments on life. We just help where we can. And certainly we want to bring the people to justice for murdering this individual. Murder is never okay. It's never okay. 
Are there any questions? How did you find out about the homicide? We received multiple tips from people that heard about the homicide, heard about the violent event, and a homeless camp is a neighborhood, and people talk. And as a result, the people in the homeless camp, or what we call the Eloise campground, they want to be safe. They don't want this guy running around stabbing people with knives and killing them. So we had several people come to us and tell us that, in fact, he had murdered our victim and buried him in a shallow grave. I think it's absolutely remarkable that we were able to find our victim as soon as we did when you look at these photographs because you could have searched and walked all over that jungle area and never found a grave there. The victim, I believe, is, uh, hold on, the victim is 39 years old. They both lived there in the Eloise campground. They both have been in prison. In fact, our suspect just got out of prison and was on probation for some other charges. Um, was it true that he was killed with stabbed, stabbed with a knife? We have not, com obviously the autopsy has not been completed because we've just exhumed the body from the grave in the last, what, three or four hours. That autopsy will be tomorrow. But that's what our suspect said, and that's the information that we received. And that's what it appears to be. However, the body is in pretty rough shape, and there's going to have to be an autopsy for us to make an absolute determination. Were there others arrested as well? There? No, there wasn't. There, you know, we hear a lot of talk, you know, did someone else help him along the way? But the information we've all plugged together at this early stage of our investigation, as you know, I say every time is subject to change as the investigation goes on, is he is solely responsible for the murder of our victim. There's no one else arrested with unrelated warrants or anything? No.